Welcome back to part three of, uh, of angels and men, of men and angels. Um, so we are looking at in this series um, various scripture passages that are used by people to uh, say that angels can become men, that men can become angels, um, false teachings regarding Jesus Christ. There are many of those. And a false view of the person of Jesus Christ is a grave error. Um, when you don't present the Jesus of the Bible, you have a false Jesus. And when you have a false Jesus, you have a false gospel. So, it is important to be uh, firmly grounded and rooted in the Word of God, comparing Scripture with Scripture. And there is not a lot of sound teaching on YouTube, and there is very, very little about this topic. Um, what I'm sharing with you has involved um, years of study. Uh, there are some things that I just won't teach on until um, I have it settled, that I have clear scripture, uh, because to start coming up with things and going off on a tangent is too easy to do. Um, in this case, uh, we, in the previous uh, video, we were talking about Jesus as an angel in the Old Testament. Now, please remember that prior to um, Jesus coming to the earth, he did not have a physical body, okay? And we're going to look at a couple passages here. Um, I'd already shared them, but we're going to kind of refresh and then move on. Uh, look over in Hebrews. It's very important. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. And also look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Now, understanding these things will stop a lot of false teaching. Okay? Um, it's important to have this understanding because um, some teach, like Jehovah's Witnesses, that Jesus rose in spirit only. Um, and some YouTube personalities teach that Jesus had a physical body prior to his incarnation as Melchizedek or with the inclusion gospel, inclusionism, false gospel, um, which many are preaching this. They're saying, you're already in Christ, just believe it. Um, no. The Bible makes a very clear distinction between the righteous and the wicked. And those who have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son are currently under condemnation. But they don't have to be. By choosing to believe on Jesus Christ, they can pass from death unto life eternal. But it is their choice. So, too bad Calvinists. Now, it makes it very clear that there's a point in time when Jesus came into the world. The Bible says in John so beautifully, God manifested in the flesh. Okay, uh, it's, it's such a beautiful passage the way John writes. Let's look at a little bit of this. And, and it's very important to stay within the framework of what Scripture says. Okay, um, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So this is important to understand why Jesus is the Word of God. He declares the, the mind of the Father. Um, Without Jesus, we wouldn't know. We would have some type of God that is so far removed uh, from men's minds. We, we, there would be no communication. There would be no um, way to have a relationship with him, which is what some people actually teach. Like deists, um, they teach that 
Um, there may be a God out there, but he's so impersonal that he doesn't care about the affairs of men. Uh, Jesus Christ came to this earth. God manifested in the flesh. Um, he revealed the Father to us. In the Old Testament, um, as the angel of the Lord, in those appearances um, where he receives worship, and we know that for certain, um, he declares to us what God has to say. And um, he speaks on behalf of God. And brothers and sisters, as messengers of God, we do the same. That's why it's very important that we're careful um, to to say, thus saith the Lord, and it's scriptural. Um, otherwise, we are not being the messenger of God. And so in the Old Testament, Jesus did not yet have a physical body. Um, although there are some heretic and Gnostic people that teach such a thing. Now, in, in that uh, regard, as, as spiritual um, angels are spirits. So in the Old Testament, Jesus is spirit. He had not yet um, come into the world as God manifested in the flesh. Likewise, men who are in heaven, who have died, their bodies left in the ground, they're in heaven, they are spirit. Um, so we, of course, like our Savior, are going to get glorified eternal bodies. And uh, that is something angels will never have. Angels were never given physical bodies to come down to this earth and have relations with women and get married. Um, it is a heretical, blasphemous teaching that many have latched onto. Um, it's full of uh, sensuality, carnality. Um, some people, like Edward Finninger, um, Robert Breaker, uh, Brian Denlinger, so many have latched on to this horrendous false teaching, and it came from Ruckman. Uh, Ruckman himself um, was no Bible-believing Christian. He is a Gnostic. Um, many false teachings. And um, he is actually the source of a lot of supposed King James Bible believers on YouTube. Uh, many people have followed his pernicious ways, his uh, ridiculously insane errors, and, and when that wasn't good enough, they built upon that and carried it farther. Uh, more putrid doctrine, more filth. And uh, all because they're not firmly rooted and grounded in the Word of God. They're pompous, arrogant, puffed up with pride, not knowing anything. Um, we are to study to show ourselves approved a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But these people, um, they have all kinds of heretical teachings, and yet they'll point fingers at the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses and try to correct them, but they're no better. They're just as bad. Now, um, angels are spirits. Look at Hebrews 1.14, which, by the way, comes from Psalms 104. Um, but we're just going to look at Hebrews, Hebrews 1 and verse 14. Um, look at verse 13 first. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? You see, angels could never be sons because they don't rule and reign over anything. They don't inherit anything. Okay, they're only servants. And look what it says in verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So they're ministering uh, spirits. They are servants. Um, look, for that word minister, look at Matthew chapter 20. Okay, Matthew chapter 20 as an example here. Matthew chapter 20, and look at verse 25 through 28. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, 
but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So you see here that a minister serves, okay, and that's what angels do. They're servants. Um, and uh, that scripture, you would think, would take care of a lot of jackboot pastors who um, pound the pulpit and think they're somebody great. Uh, but sadly, that scripture is overlooked with these people. Now, um, of course, Jesus was resurrected. Um, he was resurrected in his body. It was glorified. Okay. And we're, uh, he got back the same body that he died with, only it's resurrected, glorified. And we're going to look at proof of that in Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, the 24th chapter. And we're going to begin at verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. You see, Angels don't have bodies of flesh and bone. Angels can't come down, give themselves a body, create it for themselves, and mate with women. Um, it has never happened. It's never going to happen. Wicked angels can possess people, um, but no angel is going to give themselves a physical body, um, the body of a man, and come down to the earth and have relations with women and have children. Um, it's impossible. But Jesus here says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And of course after that he took fish and honeycomb and ate. So um, he was no spirit. He was indeed our blessed risen Savior. Praise be his name. Now, it is important to have this understanding. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus rose in spirit only. Some YouTube personalities, as I said, teach that Jesus had a physical body prior to his incarnation as Melchizedek. Some teach that Jesus was glorified prior to his resurrection. Look at John 7, 39. Okay, John 7 and 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So Jesus had not been glorified yet. He had not risen from the dead because he hadn't died. And the Holy Spirit had not been given. Okay. So that shoots down that teaching. Um, Jesus was not glorified prior to his resurrection. Okay, when he rose from the dead, he rose in a glorified body, never to die again. So all of these teachings are Gnostic. Now, men in the Old Testament are compared to angels. We're gonna um, one example is David. We're gonna look at that real quick. Um, look with me first of all in First Samuel twenty nine. First Samuel chapter twenty nine. And um, look at verse 9. And Achish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight as an angel of God. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, He shall not go up with us to the battle. And then also look at 2 Samuel 14. 2 Samuel 14. And verses 17 through 20. Then thine handmaid said, 
The word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable, for as an angel of God so is my lord the king to discern good and bad. Therefore the Lord thy God will be with thee. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king hath spoken. For thy servant Joab, he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. To fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant Joab done this thing. And my lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. So here you see David a couple of times being compared to an angel of God. Does that mean that David is an angel? No. Um, angels are angels, men are men, and of course Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He is God. And who is like unto our God? Now, when we die, um, we leave our bodies and our spirit goes to heaven. Okay. Look at, first of all, Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. And verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So our body turns back into dust. Um, man was created out of the dust of the earth. And the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Also look at 2 Corinthians. Let's see what Paul has to say. 2 Corinthians. So our loved ones, prior to the rapture, the resurrection, um, those that are in Christ, um, they are in heaven as spirits. Okay, They don't have their physical body. That doesn't mean, though, that they're floating around shapeless or anything like that. But they are without a body, okay? They are spirit. And in that regard, they are similar to an angel because angels are spirits. And this is important to remember when we look at um, Revelation chapter 22. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at the first nine verses. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. So we're going to have glorified eternal bodies that never gets old, never gets sick, um, not going to have uh, measles, mumps, the fever, colds, coughs, none of that. We're going to be perfectly healthy for all of eternity. If so, be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. See, the very proof that the Holy Spirit is in us, a down payment, is proof that we cannot lose our salvation, that we will be resurrected if we die with a glorified eternal body, that we will be in heaven when we die. Okay? Look what it says. Therefore, we are always confident. Brothers and sisters, we can have the utmost confidence in God why? Because Jesus Christ rose victoriously from the dead. He appeared unto many witnesses, witnesses who were faithful, who uh, spoke of our risen Savior. And even though it's been almost 2,000 years later, um, we have a more sure word of prophecy. We can believe this King James Bible. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that 
Whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. But are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. So we see that when we die, our body's left here, obviously, but we go to heaven to be with Jesus. Our spirit goes to heaven, um, who we are. But no longer are we um, tangled up with the flesh, okay? So um, we're going to be looking later at a passage in, in um, uh, Revelation chapter 22. So people in heaven prior to the resurrection are like the angels in that they are spirits, but unlike angels... Because we receive a glorified body. Angels never get a body of flesh. Um, never. Angels will never have that. Even the dead, now in spirit only, have a former shape. One thing I want to do is turn back with me to um, 1 Samuel 28. 1 Samuel 28. And um, let's look at verses 7 through 20. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Makes me wonder how they knew, huh? And Saul disguised himself, and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me up, bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards, out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Samuel, of course, was the prophet that had died. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me, for thou art Saul? Now, uh, some false religions like Seventh-day Adventists, they teach that this wasn't really Samuel. It was really um, a devil pretending to be Samuel. But I'm going to show you something here from the scripture. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from thee and has become thine enemy? Now, over and over, this person is referred to as Samuel. Okay, It's not referred to as a devil pretending to be Samuel. So, we can take God's word for it, and it's Samuel. But I'm going to show you something further. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. So, here he is as the prophet. Um, re reminding him of what him as the prophet the Lord had spoken by him. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David, because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest 
his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. So here we see prophecy. Samuel was a prophet. Now, the devils don't prophesy. Okay, It is for God to know the future and to those to whom he gives it to. Um, surely the Lord does nothing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. And in the New Testament, Peter says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. You see, we have the complete book, Genesis to Revelation. And then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had not eaten, for he had eaten no bread all the day, nor all the night. So, um, that was indeed Samuel, and uh, I want to point out specifically um, verse 14. And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. So uh, Samuel had a definite form. Um, he had a definite shape. He wasn't just some thing floating around out there with no shape or form. Um, now, uh, men are sometimes called an angel or compared to an angel. Um, Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. Let's look at that. This has been a very difficult passage, and it's been terribly misused by wicked Gnostic heretics um, who teach that we're all going to be angels in heaven, um, and there won't be any women in heaven. We'll all be male angels that look like we're 33 and a half years old. Um, that's not in the Bible, folks. And many a false teacher has taught that because they heard it from Peter Ruckman, and um, Peter Ruckman heard it from the devil. Now, <laughs> Revelation chapter 22, um, verses 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Now remember, an angel is a messenger. People are messengers, okay? Um, just like angels aforetime spoke on behalf of the Lord. A Gabriel comes to mind. We're going to be looking at Gabriel a little bit. Um, people spoke on behalf of the Lord. The Old Testament prophets, they would say, thus saith the Lord. So I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship God. So this particular angel is... Um, thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets. So this was a Jewish prophet. Of course, John is Jewish. Um, and he was from the Old Testament. Who was it? We don't know. Um, the Bible does not tell us. It gives us no further indication as to who it could be, as far as I can ascertain from the text. Um, it could be any number of them. We simply do not know, except that it was an Old Testament prophet. But we'll know in heaven, won't we? So, John fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things, and saith unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Okay, so who keeps the sayings of this book? People do. Okay, we are to believe the word of God and be saved. Um, if you don't believe the word of God, you're not saved. So it's very simple there. So this particular angel was actually an Old Testament prophet. Now, why would that be? Well, this is a time where the angel, or this person, this Old Testament prophet, referred to as an angel, has not yet received a glorified eternal body. They are in heaven as a spirit. So 
Therefore, that can clear up a whole lot of confusion. And we also understand because uh, based upon Jesus Christ being an angel in the Old Testament, as spirit, he had not been um, born on the earth yet. Um, and he's referred to as an angel. But we know that Jesus is not an angel. We've already looked at the scripture. Um, so there is another meaning to it. Why are they referred to as an angel? It's because messengers... You see, people on the earth are messengers. Um, this person here, referred to as an angel, was a messenger speaking on behalf of God because he's in the Word of God. And, of course, Jesus is the Word of God, and he spoke on behalf of the Father, revealed the Father to us, the very mind of God himself, because Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. So here we see that this angel is really an Old Testament prophet. Um, he had not received a body yet. But we know that he is not an angel, even though he's called one. Um, we know he's not any more than Jesus is an actual angel because the scriptures tell us he is one of his brethren, Jewish, and a prophet. Angels are not our brethren, okay? They are servants. Hebrews 1.14, it's already been covered. Now, um, next we are going to, um, I think I'll be able to wrap this up next time, but we're going to be looking at, at um, different scriptures for being messengers. And um, also, um, angels are called men or appear as men. We're going to be looking at that. So, um, that is going to do it for this video. Until next time, God bless and take care.